back to welcome you to another edition of Press Row. We've got the old gang back together, joined by Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz. I'm Matt Finkel, talking high school basketball to get started. I think we should name this show maybe the Norris Division or the NFC North Central Division because we're, we're all in the black and blue mode today. <laughs> I like it. There you go. The except, for the white, except for the whites of yeah, Todd. Right. If you, I don't know if you can get a look yeah. at Todd's kicks, but they're, they are pretty sweet. But anyway, high school basketball. And each week it feels like we've got like a marquee game or two. This week I think we've got even more than that. What are you looking forward to? Well, without a doubt, you know, Marion Local St. Henry. I mean, that's going to be rock'em, sock'em basketball, in my opinion. You've got, you know, Ryan Mikesell and Kanapke, two guys both headed Division One. Uh, Mike Sell going to uh, Dayton Kanapke on his way to Toledo. Short, you know, that slow John up 75. Hard to say that name mm. though at times, isn't it, Todd? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, I, think that's, I think that's the game as far as the game in the area Friday night. I'll tell you another game that I'm looking forward to is the Defiance game against Ottawa Glandorf. Right. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to a Saturday game between OG and Lima oh, Senior. Oh, without a doubt. Because as Aaron just mentioned, OG, a big game Friday at home against Defiance. They need a win over Defiance to keep their WBL hopes alive. And then you look at what Lima Senior has to do this week. They've already beat Toledo Central Catholic on Tuesday. Wednesday night they play Whitmer, home for St. Francis then on Friday. And then they've got OG on Saturday. And then they've got LCC on Tuesday. So an extremely busy week for the Spartans. Really interested to see how they've come through this Here, stretch. Here's the thing, too, that people have said, you know, you can't just write off Toledo St. Francis and cast them off and say, oh, that'll be a 40-point win, 30-point, whatever, it was just like it was against Central Catholic on Tuesday night. Toledo St. Francis at this time in the season is above 500 for the first time in an eternity uh, at 7-6. and six. Travis Lewis, their coach, is a friend of mine. Um, he's got that program turned around in the right direction. They're going places, and, you know, they are going to have a great opportunity coming down to Lima uh, to get on the road and, you know, Play, you know, perhaps hang with the Spartans, maybe knock them off. You never know. It's a team they cannot take uh, lightly, meaning Lima Senior on Friday night. Well, especially since it will be their third game in four nights. Right. And uh, they can't look ahead to OG and LCC, which they probably will be. But you talk about St. Henry Marion Local. You know, last week we had St. Henry Versailles and mm -hmm. Redskins rolled. Yes. Somebody got something for the Redskins, I think, is what we're interested in here. Uh, Mike Sell went off. They dominated Versailles. So I think Marion Local's got a inject some sanity into this thing here or it, it could be all over in the Mac. And Mike's up 33 and 17 on that Friday night against Versailles. Turned around went 31 and 13 against LCC the next night in overtime and on Tuesday night ho-hum 40 point night against Tip City Tip Canoe that a program that's having all sorts of problems right now. Their head coach resigned unexpectedly on Sunday. You're talking about Arns. Uh, he did not have a good game against St. Henry in the next two he games. Had yeah. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, obviously, St. Henry's on a good roll here. Yes, they are. And yeah. Marion Local's got a chance to slow them down. Uh, but OG and, and Defiance, to me, is really going to be interesting. Uh, doing their games for a few years, I came to know that they don't like each other that much. <laughs> it's one of those unsung rivalries. Absolutely. They're both a little desperate. They've already lost to Salina. They're the, Something's they're the big school in their county and think right. they should be the best school in the state. There's that type of vibe between those two. You, you're absolutely right on, no, right on you're the mark. Kidding. No, you're kidding. Ottawa, Defiance, thinking, you know what, they're the big dogs. And yeah. Got to run with the big dogs. Ed. So, and, you know, Defiance was able to bounce back and beat Archbold Tuesday night to get, get back on track beating a good Archbold team. So uh, that one interests me too. But it's going to be hard for people not to look ahead to Tuesday's game for the Lima Cup. Uh, as many good games as we're talking about here, I think everybody's already trying to focus on next Tuesday, but some games to be played before that. And on, we'll both, have, on both sides of exactly, the floor, right. not just Lima Senior, LCC. T-Birds have Friday night at Bloom Carroll and then turn around the next night and host Bath. And now granted, it's not the, uh, you know, the same stretch as um, Lima Senior has this week with five games over the course of seven days, but the T-Birds had three and four, and then they're gonna turn around and have three and five. So both teams might be you know, a little bit tired come Tuesday night. It'll be interesting to see. And we'll have much more on that Lima Senior LCC game coming up this Monday night with a special warm up from the Buffalo Wild Wings in Lima. We'll have the Spartans in at 6.30, LCC on at 7. So come on out and enjoy, join us at Buffalo Wild Wings on Allentown Road in Lima. And you can see those Monday night on WOSN. Of course, we'll have the game Tuesday night on 44. A little extra juice in, in that game this year as opposed to previous years, even though it's always, mm -hmm. it's always special. 
Just some other games wanted to quickly mention. Coada Grove is an interesting one for me on Saturday. USV Ormy on Saturday as well. And then Friday night, NWC Bluffton Spencerville. Mm -hmm. All good choices. Well, well, also, if you want to talk about USV, they've got to travel to Lehman Catholic. Friday night, Lehman lost to Perry last week. Perry now in the driver's seat in the NWCC, but the Rams also have something to say about that. So a lot of good games will have highlights on the sports report as well on Friday and Saturday night. Have a feeling a couple of names that we just talked about are going to come up in this question. I know, in fact, I know they're going to. <laughs> Which Division I recruit will have the best college basketball career? Coming out of the MAC. Coming out of the MAC. You know, I, I still like Kyle Arns. I think he's Division I ready physically. I know the injury set him back last year, but, uh, you know, a guy like Tom Izzo doesn't bring you in because you're not any good. And I really like Mike Sell as well. I, I think those two both have a very good chance to be very good Division One players. Uh, you know, Kanapke, big guys are always a bit of a crapshoot, and that, I'm not knocking him. I'm just saying if I got to pick my odds, you know, big guys sometimes uh, don't develop as well as the smaller guys. I, I really like Kyle Arns. I think he's an explosive player. Uh, I would pick him if I had to go with odds. I like all three guys, but. And I guess because I've seen Kyle in person play more than I have Mike Sell. And I've seen Mike Sell in person a couple of times as well the last few years. I will also go Kyle Arns. And I was receiving a text from a Lima native who was a backup quarterback at Michigan State uh, during Saturday night's game with Versailles, meaning Ty O'Connor. And he said, is he Sparty ready? And during a quarter timeout, I answered him back and said, I will compare him to Diebler, but more athletic. He can run the floor, he can jump out of the gym, he can stroke the three and take over a game at any moment. And Ryan Mikesell can do those things as well. And then ironically, at the end of our game broadcast, John Cook, who was my broadcast partner Saturday night, compared him to Diebler without me even knowing, or him knowing that I had done that as well. I think Kyle will fit in up at Michigan State. He'll, he'll fit in well there. I think Ryan Mikesell will fit in very nicely at Dayton and could be, you know, stretch the floor as a stretch two, stretch three there for them. And, you know, Kanapke, if he can stay healthy, I think that's going to be the big thing for him in the MAC. You know, you can't teach 6'10". You can't stretch out 6'10". You know, a guy's into 6'10". But somebody who might find his niche very nicely in the MAC, you know, with that level of competition also. Without repeating what you guys just said, I, I like Mike Sell a little bit better just because of his all-around game. I think he'll be able to translate that a little bit better to the college game. Aren't if you know Tom Mizzle can work his magic, beef him up a little bit. He he could be very very good. And you you just took the words out of my mouth about Kanapke. You can't teach six ten. Right. Yeah, it should be interesting to watch all of them. And in uh, we saw Dakota Mike Mathias. Mike Sell is the better defender, though I think of yeah. the three. Not in the MAC, obviously, but Dakota Mathias making an impact as a freshman on at Purdue. Maybe as soon as next year, these guys are are on the court making an impact. Ohio State. Let's talk them now on the hardwood. Will they make the NCAA tournament? They've struggled a little since we got into Big Ten play. That's a good question. That's a, that's a hard question Well, to the good news for the Buckeyes is they don't have any bad losses. The bad right. news is they don't have any good wins either. Thad Mata's MO has always been he has, his teams have improved as the season has gone along. If this Ohio State team follows that path, I think they should get into the tournament. But I had just have not seen it on the floor. It's been an entirely inconsistent team. And when you think about how highly touted this senior class was, Sam Thompson, Amir Williams, Shannon Scott, five-star guys, McDonald's All-American guys, they have not produced on the floor. I think there's some serious question marks about the future of the Ohio State basketball program. The thing I like is uh, I just saw some stuff this week where uh, Coach Mott is considering shaking up the lineup, and, and I think that needs to be yeah. done. Mm -hmm. This team seems a bit complacent at times, and – it, it's got a, it's time for a shakeup, but you know, it, just like early in the football season, all seemed lost for Ohio State. <laughs> in Urban, we trust. In Thad, we trust. This team will get better. They'll win enough games to get in the tournament. Let's not start talking crazy like NIT. Well, let's, let, let's face down. it. There's already corners of the internet that want Thad Mata gone. Well, of course they are. And you have to idiots. wonder, has they're, they're he They're having reached, delusions of grandeur. Yeah. Has Thad Mata reached his ceiling? I, I don't know if he can take this Ohio State program any deeper. It's been 55 years since Ohio State has won a national title. Now, granted, Thad Mata's teams play well. You don't, you, I can't recall any off-court issues with any Thad Mata no. recruits or players. So he recruits the right type of guys, and most of the time they do play well and have success. But when you're starting to be compared to the national championship football team, and it's been 55 years since Ohio State has won their only national championship in basketball, the questions have to be asked. So they, I mean, the program's reached its ceiling? I, I think so. 
I mean, Ohio State basketball has reached its ceiling. Nobody's been able to do it in 55 years. I, All I those think, guys were pretty good coaches. I think under Thad Mata, you have seen what you're going to get out of Ohio State. Every couple of years, you're going to get a Final Four run. I don't see championships coming in with Thad Mata. Yeah, I, I think that's, that might be a bit overgeneralizing. I mean, we're in the championship game twice. You get a couple bounces. He's got one, maybe two titles. You get all the, the ifs, ands, and buts for candy nuts every day. Oh, be I, Christmas. I, I know, but ho ho ho. You know, <laughs> it, when you're getting to final fours and championship games on your resume, I, I think he's got the chops. And he's still. Could, and the one thing I will say is he can obviously still recruit with the best of them. Um, D'Angelo Russell, I, I love this kid, but, but you can't ride his back. You, you, Amir back Williams, him. Shannon Scott, they have do not developed under. They missed Thad on Mata. those guys. I think they. Uh, and Williams Sam especially. Thompson. Sam Thompson's a one hit. Yeah. Sam Thompson can throw down dunks and play a little defense. Outside of that, he, he doesn't have a jump shot. So you have to really question the development of the team. There are some folks who are looking at the coaching staff, losing Chris Chen to the NBA and bringing in Greg Paulus if they lost something offensively with that move. And making Paulus the, quote, offensive coordinator of the staff, too. I think the next three weeks, guys, is going to tell us everything we need to know about this Ohio State team. I still think that they get into the tournament. This talk of NIT, I don't, I'm not buying that right now. I think that they can get into the tournament. They might not be the Elite Eight, the Final Four. They might not even be a Sweet 16 team, but I think they get in. And as far as the ceiling, I, here's what I think on that. They haven't hit the ceiling, but they're getting closer to the ceiling than maybe some would think. I still think Thad Mata is an excellent coach, but they're, I mean, the other day when they played Iowa, I saw absolutely zero life out of this team. And I watched basically that entire game, and it was, you know, 9 nothing a minute two into it. Before, and there was slow zero start. That's slow thing. start, zero energy. Seriously, the guys looked like they just got off the bus yeah. in Iowa City, walked into their pink locker room or whatever, and was like, can you believe this? we got to play basketball here. Yeah, and this went through the motions. They've started really slow, and then they'll come on and get within seven or five late, and it, that slow start has just burned them that the they can't come back. The best game that this team has had this year was the Michigan game the day after the national championship. And that started with a defensive performance that was very strong. Right. I mean, you can talk about offense all you want. This team has to find a defense, a, an intensity and that, that can get them in games and keep them from ball, falling behind. That's the recipe they've got to follow. But, you know, criticism of that model, all is fair in college hoops. I get it. But I, I would say this would be a momentary dip in the program. Losing Gent, the stuff you talked about is all right. legitimate. But I think this talk about replacing him is a little far-fetched in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, the thing is, I noticed last year, you know, there, was, there seemed to be a dip. And, you know, it seemed, I don't know if it was because people were tired of Aaron Kraft being jammed down their throat or Aaron getting the spotlight, which, you know, he played his tail off for four years well, at it, Ohio I, State. I think last year you look at LaQuentin Ross not making yes. the step that people thought he was going to make. Yeah, and, you right. know, I think that was a part of it, and it just seemed to progress. But as far as a lineup shakeup, that wouldn't surprise me one bit at all with this team. Some, there needs to be some sort of juice there. Yep. All right, let's finish with some baseball. We've got the Reds and Indian mm -hmm. caravans coming up. Did both of those teams do enough this offseason – to fill the holes and, and fix the voids that were missing for the previous season. Well, I mean, I, I'm sticking with my story on the Reds. The way they <laughs> fill their holes is guys that are supposed to play actually play. Uh, Joey Votto's got to play yeah. and produce. You can't have your frontline guys injured and missing three quarters of a season expect to be any good. Uh, the Reds brought in Marlon Burr to supposedly shore up left field. <clears throat> you know, we'll see. He's toward the end of his career, but he could provide a little pop. I think, you know, the Reds just have to get performances out of guys that they're supposed to get. Jay Bruce, people like this, Brandon Billy Phillips. Hamilton, and they'll be fine. They'll be better. I don't know if they're good enough, but it's not like they're going to go out and retool this whole team on the fly. There's, well, you're you, a your bit thoughts on, on getting rid of Latos and Simone from the rotation? <clears throat> well, I think it was something that sets them up for future maneuvers. You know, I think they're very hopeful that Tony Singrani can come back to where he was. And then the fifth starter, the, oh, any combination of young guys, they're hoping can step in and do it. And they knew they had to maneuver to get Bird to help that lineup. You know, Johnny Cueto's probably going to be gone after this year. They need everybody to get to the level they're supposed to be and make a run at it this year and then step back and see what kind of cash they have going forward. You know, and you look at the Indians and what they may have or may not have, you know, based on pieces that have come, pieces that have gone. I wonder, you know, Mark Shapiro and company is, 
have they are they going to contend based on what Detroit's done, what Kansas City may or may not lose with James Shields, right. who could be out, but Kansas City comes in as the team that went to the World Series that re returns a good core, although they lose uh, Billy Butler out of their lineup, which was a high, high home run percentage, high strikeout percentage. Mm -hmm. He's now in Oakland, and, you know, will the Indians, you know, be able to put the pieces together to fight for second place, to fight for first place? I still think Detroit's the best team in the division, even though they lose Max Scherzer to Washington earlier this week. However, you know, I mentioned James Shields. There's been some dialogue between the Tigers and Shields camp. If that deal gets done, I mean, it's still the middle of January. We've got a month before pitchers and catchers report that, uh, you know, whether or not James Shields comes to Detroit. If he does, that just plugs the hole that was left by Scherzer. You'll do some maneuvering around with your rotation. You add a couple pieces to it as well and go from there. But I still think the Indians, if they can stay healthy, that's the main thing, just like with the Reds. they got to stay healthy. Swisher has got to cut down on his strikeouts. Well, I think that's where the acquisition of Brandon Moss is key. Is yeah. Moss will allow them a little bit more flexibility at both the corner positions and the corner outfield positions. Let's swish DH. Uh, Cleveland, I think the question is, the second half, their rotation was really good. Can they do that a full year? Is it year? really that good? Right. Can, Klu right. can Kluber be Corey Kluber of 2014? In 2015, is he a Cy I, Young in yeah, 2015? Is, this, yeah. is that I think that is without a doubt the number one question of this pitching staff going forward. And uh, when Jim Rosenhaus and Bobby DiBiase are in town in a couple of weeks, I'm sure that that will be one of the first things they get asked. You yeah. got to figure Kluber's not going to be as good. I mean, he was off the charts. Oh my gosh, he's he was still going to be strong. You assume those other guys have got to get better. There's mm -hmm. potential there. Some of those Danny guys Salazar. Start, yeah, I think mean, Salazar guys. and Bauer. They, 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 they got Gavin was Floyd very as good well. down yes. the stretch last year. Yeah. But the heat wasn't on. Exactly. Right. Now, can those young guys do it all season when they really need them? Because let's not forget them. how poorly Cleveland played the first half of the season, 2007, right. 2008, 2009, where they had all this pressure on them because they had strong finishes the year before. And I know it's a different cast of characters, but a lot of times that type of stuff just kind of keeps on getting cycled through clubhouses. Mm hmm. Looking forward to both those teams coming to the Lima area. We can find out a little more pitchers and catchers report in less than 30 days. That's going to do it for this edition of Press Row. Thank you for joining us. We will see you next time on the West Ohio Sports Network.